Welcome to the Stonehean View, a podcast series which interviews a range of sport club representatives and leading professional sport club personnel during the COVID-19 shutdown. We find out what these people are doing during the current health crisis with some of our most popular winter sports seasons postponed. I'm Mark Heenan and today I'm joined by my co-host, Mark Stone. Now, Stoney, we've come back from our sponsored episodes. Obviously, it's been a big couple of weeks for July, but the next three guests are some of the biggest guests we've ever had. Uh, I mean, just to come to look of it, 415 VFL, AFL games combined between them. And the guest in the middle has been to seven Olympics, which includes five summer games and two uh, Winter Olympic games. It's just fantastic. Just keep racking them up. And today's guest, Mark, and... Uh... Your rap sheet for this guest is uh, four-time All-Australian, four-time club best and fairest, Ruck Rover and his, uh, and his team, um, team of the century, uh, All-Australian Hall of Fame in 2008. I'll tell you what, credentials are pretty good for this next guest, Mark. Absolutely, Stoney. Uh, one of our biggest yet. Today's guest, obviously, as you said, he's played 274 VFL, AFL games for the Geelong Cats between 1987 and 2001. He's coached the Western Jets and also the Geelong Falcons in the TAC Cup. He held coaching stints with Peel Thunder in the Waffle, South Adelaide in the Sandful, and was appointed caretaker coach of Port Adelaide in 2012. More recently, he joined Collingwood's AFL club coaching staff in 2018 and was appointed the club's VFL coach in 2020 before COVID-19 hit, where he was stood down from the Magpies. Outside of football, he's had a varied work life. He's worked as a real estate agent. He's actually been my postie. And he's also been a local newspaper columnist with the Geelong Independent. And he had a column called The Buddha's Yak. And he, now he works as a farmhand in series west of Geelong. We welcome to the Stonehean View, Collingwood VFL coach and former Geelong Cat star, Gary Hocking. Thanks, Gary. Thank you to the two marks. Thanks for having me on. Well, it's absolute pleasure, Gary, and I want to get it started. Obviously, we're going to rotate the questions today, but sure. I think one of the first things I'd like to come up with and talk to you about was that I know, obviously, you've been in a lot of contact with Brad Gotch, and um, he's uh, had a radio interview in the last few weeks, um, talking to Jared Waitley on SEN and just talking about what's been happening. Can you just go back to where it was when you found out? Because we've done some interviews with a number of uh, AFL leading personnel and, and including AFL recruiters and, and what's been happening during these times. But you're, you're actually working as a farmhand now in series. But just talk about the last few months and where you found out that decision where you had to stand down from Collingwood and um, I suppose uh, what was your emotion behind it? Yeah, no, great question because I think everybody at the moment is suffering from, uh, from this nasty virus that it's affecting many, many people at many, many levels, you know, many jobs and uh, many industries. So um, you are right. I'm, I'm working a farmhand at the moment, but I'm very, very fortunate to find some work. I know people out there really struggling um, either singly or they're married, you know, and, you know, they're, um, they're in their work life and there probably isn't a, you know, a real sort of future for them at the moment and uh, there's no income coming in so I'm very very fortunate to to be still be able to sort of uh, get up in the morning and um, have some positivity around being able to you know get an income and, and pay the bills because they the work stops but the bills keep coming in as you know so I was involved at Collingwood we were um, just past round one we, we just smashed the Bulldogs um, in round one the VFL was sort of uh, just about to kick off in a few weeks time and um, yeah, after that Friday night game, there was almost like a, a, a full club meeting on the Monday to sort of discuss what was going on with uh, COVID-19 and then everybody's role. So it was probably an immediate stand down from, from most of the, most of the uh, full-time staff and also the, you know, the part-time staff as well. And Collingwood, like a lot of football clubs, have a lot of people. So it affected a lot of people right across uh, the football industry and let alone also at Collingwood. So... Basically, what they wanted to do was have a skeleton crew um, initially to sort of just uh, continue to sort of work with the players. Uh, that was Bucks, uh, Jeff Walsh, uh, Marcus Wagner, the high performance, uh, Kevin White, who's the fitness guru, uh, and a couple of other sort of people, one in welfare, Chris Dixon, uh, yada, yada, yada. So the majority of people were stood down right through the football club. So the CEO was working. Obviously, Eddie was continuing his role as well. So... Initially, a, a big shock. What do we do? Um, how long is this 
um, going to be for? How long is the virus going to be around? How does it affect you? So basically, I've been in off since round one, which is probably, I think, nearly, what, uh, 14, 15, 16 weeks, I think, at, at this point. So the really good thing, though, uh, Mark, is that we've had really good dialogue with the footy club. Like, they've continually kept us in the loop, you know, like weekly, monthly, kept us in the loop about, you know, what's been going on, where are we at. So, I mean, the full VFL has been cancelled, as you quite know, the AFL is still going. Um, so, basically, I've just had dialogue over text or Zoom meetings, you know, with uh, Bucks and the coaching group, been watching the games, uh, been you know, get sent the, sent the link of the games to get on there and watch and, and still have some sort of um, opportunity to work with the players uh, and, and the coaches, although from a distance and through Zoom. Uh, Gary, just with um, your own career and um, the reason why Collingwood took you on, you've had, a, a, as Mark mentioned about, you know, Port Adelaide and um, the NAB Cup or the TAC Cup about your game as a stoppage player. Collingwood um, saw uh, that strength of yours. So have you always been from a young fella the stoppage player that knew where to put their body. What's the what's the skill you need to be a really good stoppage player, and how do you work with the Collingwood players with that? Yeah, great question. Um, I guess being a midfield player, you sort of get to play against you know some of the all-time greats of the competition years ago. So I'm working one at the moment, Robert Harvey. You know, and there's all all, all different body types, all, all different types of um, personnel and makeup that actually makes a makes a you know like a midfielder. I wasn't generally big, but then I played on Cuda Phoenix, Craig Bradley with speed, James Hurd, elite skills. You know, Nathan Buffy was a great player. So I've had the opportunity not to just sort of put my head in the sand but to try and learn along the way how do I get better as a player but also how do I get better as a coach and how can I then help coach players to be better midfield players so along my football journey uh, I've been able to you know sort of take out the really good bits of what a great player needs to have um, and then continue to sort of learn so I guess the role at Collingwood was more of a a stoppage um, tactical um, coach but also looking at the opposition but I mean the good things that make a, a very good midfielder, uh, you've, you've got to you've got to sort of win your own footy. There's no doubt about that. That's the number one thing. You've got to have good good strength, good core strength. You've got to be able to read what's going on with the opposition. So if you're not getting the ball or, or the opposition's winning, winning the ruck, so if Grundy's not winning the ruck for, say, Degawi or Talor or Sidebottom, you've got to start to sort of, you know, look at what's happening around. Who's winning the ball? Uh, where are the exit points? Uh, but also, how can they work together? So you've got all this good individual talent but it's no good on its own. And I think it's really important that you bring all that really good individual talent and make it work together. So it's my turn to go. It's your turn to go, Mark. You know, like it's the goey's turn, then it's Adam's turn. Not everyone can have a, you know, lick of the ice cream all the time. They've all got to take their turn and they've all got to play their role. So there's got to be defensive mids. Uh, there's got to be attacking mids. There's always a sweeper in place. Gary, we've had a couple of guests on that you would probably have some attachment to. And, the two that stand out to me were uh, a sports psychologist that actually works in the Collingwood environment, and that's super super netball, but also, um, you know, the, the women's football team. And also, we had Kinnear Beetson on our uh, podcast oh. series going back. And one of the questions that I posed to, to, to Kinnear was about, you know, about Ty Canelli, um being stood down in his role. And, you know, it was a hard decision and all that. So... I understand that you have been in contact a bit with someone like a Brad Gotch from Collingwood as well, but is there a bit of a players' union or former players' union, particularly with the coaches, going back into that environment? Because the ones the ones like yourself have been unfortunate uh, not to have a role in football, and it's great that you've got work now and you've got to pay the bills. I get all of that. But uh, what is the dialogue between even the other coaches, like if it's a Ty Canelli or the other coaches that are in AFL ranks that have been stood down? Yeah, you don't you don't um, you don't get to sort of talk to all the coaches who have been stood down, you know, through this COVID period. Um, what happens is there's an AFL Coaches Association. So uh, there was Greg Hutchinson, there was Mark Brayshaw, and also Ron Watt, who would be looking after all the clubs. So Ronnie Watt would have seven or eight clubs. Greg Hutchinson would have another, you know, seven or eight clubs, and Mark Brayshaw was overseeing all that. So you would have constant dialogue with them about you know, contracts going forward, other work opportunities. So people in the industry, Jared Rivers lost his job at North Melbourne. Um, so people you sort of know and have um, befriended or you've, you've played against and you've had an association or relationship with, you've tended to sort of try and seek out those people and reach out to them and say, hey, how are you going? How are you feeling? Have you got work? Uh, what's happening? How's the kids? Those sort of type of things. So. 
I think that's what's been really, really important is um, to use your networks and reach out to see if those people are, are doing okay and if they've got some work going at the moment. And gotchi has been one of those guys who's kept in constant um, communication with myself, but also I've been bringing him, you know, every day has his golf swing going. Um, <laughs> you know, he, he's always, he was down at the range a fair bit um, during this period trying to work on his, uh, on his golf game. So... Look, he, he's been great, and he's another person that has has really reached inside to Brenton Sanderson, to, to Matty Boyd, to Anthony Rocker, um, all those sort of guys, because he's coaching the coaches as well. So it's part of his role is to make sure that, you know, we're, we're still active, we're still trying to do some PD, and we're still trying to work. Porter, when you played, you played a certain style of footy, and uh, the, the game's changed a lot since you started, since you were playing, and to evolve with the game, um, is that a difficult thing, or just... It's just an evolvement that just goes along the way that goes. No, no, you're still going to be able to evolve yourself. And I think that what I've been able to do is try and find other sports. So I'm very um, interested in the, the NFL. Um, and also, like, I look at hockey, I look at soccer, I look at sort of, the, you know, the way that some of the, the teams are moving the ball, how they move the ball, how, how are they defended, what are the better defensive teams in, in NFL, why. Um, you know, so I'm always trying to sort of look at different ways. And I think what's crept in over a period of time, Mark, is a lot of the NFL's sort of, or whatever a coach, and assistant coaches at these AFL clubs are into, you tend to sort of look at, can we use that, you know, in, in, uh, in the AFL? Let's talk about your current work life at the minute with the farmhand. I mean, obviously, like you're at the back of series, there's a lot of acreage and, you know, having had some chats to you before coming yeah. on this uh, podcast that we wanted to talk to you about uh, what life in, was installed with, and you mentioned you know getting on the whipper snipper and all that sort of stuff so that transition into the farm hand I mean I mean you grew up in Cobram um, lots of you know properties up there probably lots of acreage in that sense um, what was the adjustment like going to that and are there many sort of footy ovals I mean obviously you've got you know the Barrable Cricket Club you know series primary school nearby I mean what, what do you do? You think about that? Do you think about the footy oval and the shape of the oval when you when you're out on, on at the back of Barrable Hills there? Yeah, so it's um, hundred acres. Um, so there's many many duties that you've got to be able to do every day. Obviously, you know, like as soon as you mow, you know, hundred acres, and it takes you a couple of weeks and to mow and then to whip the snip and all the trees and all the paddocks and and all those sort of things. By the time you look around. The little weeds are, are growing up again. So, you know, I, I cursed myself a few times thinking I've done all that work. All of a sudden now they, they start bobbing up again. But, look, it's been great. Um, it's been cold. But, I mean, it's it's, um, it's winter time. So you just rug up a little bit, work a little bit harder, you know, shovel a little bit more or, or, or do, you know, different things. Um, but I've really enjoyed it. You know, it's actually given me a bit of time to sort of think about what I want to do down the track, you know, and, and also the immediate right now. Um, you know, I sort of... I get on the mower and sometimes I think about how can I improve myself as a coach? Um, how can I help Bucks? Um, can I text Gotchi and I've, I've, I've got something there that maybe this might work, you know, for Gotchi and he'll, he'll text back. I might get in touch with, say, a Pendleberry or a Begoey and check out how they're going and how their footy's going and how they're feeling personally, stuff like that. So it's actually been quite, quite good. Now, the, the earlier nights being able to get home because the VFL, you, you're finishing at 7.30, 8 o'clock, jump on the train and get, get home back to Geelong. But some of those nights have been able to, I've been able to get home and just be a dad. So this crisis has just allowed me to sort of get home and see the family again, Mark. And, you know, you, you've been around Geelong. I ran the garbage, you know, I was on the council. Like you said, I've done real estate. I've done many, many things. I really haven't sort of sat back on my haunches. I've actually got out there and tried many different things. And this sort of time at the moment, it's just given me a little bit of opportunity to sort of just take a reset, reset a little bit. Where do I want to be by the time on, you know, 59, 60? What do I want to do post 60? And also it's given me time in the immediate point of view. How can I get better in, in, in coaching? What, what books are out there can I read? Uh, is there any more sort of vision that I can sort of get off the uh, the internet or or discuss with some of the coaches at the pies, you know, to just make myself better while I'm still a little bit idle? I think, uh, Buddha, you, you mentioned a couple of things, because for me, grounded and communication are really two important factors, I think, in coaching. So yep. just take you back to, uh, and thanks to Mark Hume for this, um, talked about a story when you were in Port Adelaide that when Matthew Palmer's got sacked and you ordered a four o'clock beach session, uh, <laughs> Early in the morning, what was the thinking about that right at that moment that 
created that uh, that thought about taking the boys to the beach at 4.15. Yeah, well, Kane Corns has put a little bit of, uh, um, bit of mayonnaise on top of it. And there's a little bit of GST on that story, Mark. But what was, it was actually not in my first week. We, we played Hawthorne down in Tasmania. And all I wanted to do is just do a couple of things. You, when you take over, you really don't want to change too much. You just want to tinker with a couple of things. So the boys were kicking backwards a little bit. Uh, and turn the ball over. So I said, everything's got to be short 45. You know, let's try and take the up on, on a little bit, you know, and, you know, and work this way um, and go forward with the ball a little bit more. The other thing I wanted to do was the discipline. I really wanted, I really felt that the group was, had some talent there, but they weren't disciplined enough, you know, to, to really get the best out of themselves. So they were turning up late to meetings. So I, I become a little bit more of a like, hey, you're late. You're five minutes late. You're two minutes late. You know, you should have been here two minutes earlier. Stuff like that. Don't walk in when it's 11 o'clock. Walk in when it's 10.58. Let's get sorted. We haven't been great for, you know, like for 16 weeks. Let's start being great now and see where that might be able to take us. So there was a few times where, and Matthew Nix, who is now the coach of Adelaide, was an assistant coach as well. We had Daniel Healy, Trent Henschel, uh, Gotchi was there as well. Uh, so we had some some really um, talented, you know, coaches. But Nixie said, look, Right now, this is what's happening. This is what happened right now. What's happening at Port Adelaide was happening a few years ago at Sydney when he was up there. And I think it was um, Stuart Maxfield, that let me right, Maxfield, yeah. Um, Kirky, those sort of boys went, enough's enough, threw the line in the sand and said, we're going to go down and do some beat sessions. You know, six o'clock, get down there, uh, do some, do some, um, some discipline stuff, some punishments, that sort of thing. So Nixie said to me, this worked at Sydney. We turned it around. I, I reckon you should call it a six o'clock meeting. I said, all right, I'll be there. So we're all there on the beach, all the boys stripped off. And then I said, boys, hang on a minute. And I said to the coaches beforehand, like, we're going to get in with them. We need to show that we're, we're all on the same page. We're in it together. Bloody freezing. The most coldest <laughs> war I've found. <laughs> and um, we're all in there. We're in there for about 45 minutes. And Matt, Matty Thomas was freezing. I think he had hypothermia because he had no body fat. He was as fit as, you know, and they were, all, they were all hovering around him. So we did that for a couple of weeks until the penny dropped, okay, and then the penny dropped. And then they started to play really good footy. So Hawthorne beat us in the first game by about 60 points. West Coast, I think it was a uh, kick off or kick just before the siren, they beat us. Um, Brisbane, I think, beat us at Amy by a couple of points and then we drew against the Tigers at the MCG so we started to sort of put the building blocks in place discipline you know uh, first and then we started to sort of coach all the team stuff as well off the back of that but I can remember Gotchi and I went to Henley Beach Chibo and got a coffee and we didn't drink it we just sat there <laughs> holding it to try and warm up you know to keep warm <laughs> It was one of the coldest mornings. Hey, tell me about two people at Port Adelaide. I'm fascinated by them, and one of which was uh, a guy who used to coach Bell Park and now is the Port Adelaide coach, and Ken Hinckley. And he comes across as a really emotive character with what he does. And the other person, Mark Stone knows I've got a bit of love for him, is Koshy. I mean, you know, they're, they're, they're interesting characters. Um, I think the way I read it is that... Uh, he wears his heart on his sleeve, Ken Hinckley, with his inspirational speeches. And, you know, Koshy's just the ultra funny businessman. I mean, what are they like? Yeah, I'll go with Koshy first. So I'll leave Ken to talk a little bit longer about uh, Ken. But look, meeting Koshy and seeing Koshy, you know, like uh, operate, you know, like he, he is, um, you know, world class. Like he, he is a, um, you know, an astute person. You know, as soon as he walked in, he sort of, um, you know, demanded, um, demanded and commanded respect from the whole playing group and from the whole club. And, when he was out the front talking to the players, like you could see that, you know, you could hear a pin drop. Everybody was just, you know, gravitated to this guy. He's done a lot, you know, in, in TV, but also he's a Adelaide boy. So, and he grew up, um, you know, just around the corner from, from the footy ground from Melbourne and down there, I think at Largs, Largs Bay or, you know, somewhere out, out that way. But you could, the passion was just oozing out of him, the passion to make Port Adelaide, you know, the best club you know, and, and the most feared and respected club again was just like, was just dripping off him. And, you know, everybody just gravitated towards him. And he's been great for the club. You know, Ken Hinckley loves to win. The number one thing, he just loves winning, you know, and he loves, he loves seeing the players win. He's a very, very um, strong communicator. Um, there's that clip of him at Bell Park at, at three quarter time in the grand final against the Marys where he got the boys up. Stuff like that hasn't changed. Ken's, Ken's a very, very, um, smart football person he sees the game really well 
um, and you can communicate it to the players um, and so that the players are on the same page. And, you know, he's very, very strong. He, he drives them hard. He's got, he's got you know, high standards and, and he's got a, a real strong, you know, uh, streak of discipline in him. So, you know, if the players are, are thinking about having a, a beer on a six-day break, they better think again. He, he'll give them a seven-day a seven break, but six days just tests him a little bit because he just loves winning and loves competing. Now, Mark Stone, Gary Hocking, Buddha Hocking, had the honour of being my first postie to my house and uh, always remember the first power bill that I ever got. The end of it. <laughs> I worked it was the signed by Gary Hocking and yes. his player Guernsey number at Geelong. A couple of things here, Buddha. What, what was, not so much with that, but it, what, what, did, what was some of the cheeky pranks that you did? Not so much during your playing days, but... Um, even if you knew someone where they lived or whatever and what you do to their mail in that sense. And what else have you been doing in isolation? Yeah, so the mail stuff, uh, if I knew some people that um, lived in the area, Grovedale, you know, there's a few sort of high-profile people like yourself, Mark, that lived in the, <laughs> in the area. Um, I think Gary Abbott Senior lived in there as well. So I think there was, there was obviously a uh, couchy too. So there was uh, like a hockey you know, a, a couch, an ablet, and a an heenan. So, you know, uh, big celebrities through Grovedale. But there were some people I knew. I just signed stuff, you know, I'd say, to Barb, love, love best switches, you know, Buddha Whiskers or Gary Hocking, put the 32 in there. Uh, I just played a few tricks and had a bit of fun with people with the mail. Um, when I was running the garbage, we used to do a few things running the garbage. So Lee Colbert um, was back then uh, playing at Geelong. So we, we dump a whole heap of uh, garbage on his front lawn and, uh, people that I knew um, when I was running the garbage, Dwayne Russell lived out here at Ceres, just down the road here, and he had the old silver bins. So I'd empty stuff in the in the truck and then get the truck to drive back and and uh, flatten his bins and then big frisbee <laughs> back into his yard. You know, just stuff like that. At the footy club, I couldn't tell you on here on this podcast about some of the stuff that would happen around the football club. Um, snakes, you know, tiger snakes in people's lockers, um, chickens in uh, the Spiro and Tony Malakalis's combi van. Andrew Buse brought in a whole heap of chickens from out to his place. He's live on a farm, brought them all in, probably 15, 20 chickens as they went out to, to get into their combi van. There were, there were many, many antics that we used to try and do, and it still goes on now. I mean, even Colin with the boys are still playing pranks and, and tricks yeah. on each other. Uh, now, so um, that's just part of being, you know, involved in, in, in a footy club. Well, look, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on the program. I mean, one thing that I think with yourself that I really love is that you're a hard worker. You've got a great footy brain. You've got some, you're a great storyteller, and you've also got a bit of banter in there. I mean, that really just ticks all the boxes for me, and that's why we wanted to get you on this podcast because we think you're fantastic. So. We just want to thank you for coming on and um, just sharing some wonderful insights as an AFL coach, not just as an AFL player, but also an AFL coach in this current environment and what you're doing now, because this series is about um, understanding what people are doing during COVID and, uh, and sports people and, 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 and the effects that it's had on them. So thanks for coming on. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Mark Stone, what a great guest. Gary Hocking, uh, he's done everything when it comes to footy in terms of you know, he's playing accolades. Um, you know, just some of the insights that he's just shared with us has just been just, uh, it's out of the top drawer. i tell you what, I just, um, if Gary ever wanted to coach a senior team and I was the president of a club, and this is, I know he's still there, is that I'd be saying, um, Gary Hocken has got a lot of things that people want. They want to be able to communicate with their players. They want to be able to know what their stories are, where they come from and the issues they face in everyday life. And I think COVID's one of those issues. You can check us out at the Stonehenge View. Type into Facebook, the Stonehenge View, and also on Instagram. Our podcast is also available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and also Podbean. Stony, you've got it on the YouTube channel. You're doing great things there. And, you know, we're going to have a, another great guest next week. We've sent out a few clues. So, um, yeah, some big names. And uh, Gary Hocking is uh, just one of those to kick us off. So until next time, we'll see you on the Stonehenge View for Episode 18. Thanks for your time. <laughs>